This is Professor Pelton. This is uh, part one of chapter two, section five. So now we're going to be doing quadratic equations. Um, so a quadratic equation is essentially over oh, one, one, one variable, is if the leading term is to the uh, second power. The first power and zero power term are really irrelevant, whether they exist or not. But the standard form goes in descending order for the methods of solving. <coughs> the root of the equation is a solution, which is not unique to quadratics necessarily. Cubics, you know, have three. Cortex have four. Linear have one. Um, which is, it's also, they're also the uh, x-intercepts of the uh, graph. So, uh, order of operations, not everything's here. Obviously, I don't have trig and other things in here, but these are general outline of the four levels of the order of operations. Um, so, when simplifying, you go from um, one to four, right? So, in grade school, you simplify, right? You also simplify expressions in algebra. If you're solving equations, you work backwards. If you're using the isolation method, um, if you're factoring, that doesn't necessarily apply. And simplify always comes before solve. You have to keep in mind the innermost rule and the uh, left to right rule. So basically, when, when you're doing the order of operations of one through four, or four through one, if you're solving for when you're doing four through one, and then one through four is when you're simplifying, All right? So what you did in grade school. Okay, let's use the, the isolation method of solving for the following problems. So the isolation method works for all of these problems because there is only a singular x, meaning it only has x squared or only has an x, okay? Or if you simplify, it'll come back x squared. If they had x and x squared, then you have to use a different method, which will go over on another page. Okay, so I'm going to add 31. Right? So this is level 4. Right? So we'll work backwards. So 4x squared um, <clears throat> equals 80. So level 3 is multiply and divide. So I'm going to divide by 4. Because this is both multiply by 4 and divide by 4. That's add 31 and most plus 31. So you, uh, properties of equality, uh, they cancel each other. So x squared equals 20. So level 2 is exponents and radicals. So I'm going to square root both sides because the square root cancels the square. Because they're inverse operations. Plus or minus, right? Because x equals plus or minus. And we break down 20. That's 2, 2, 5. So x equals plus or minus 2 root 5. So we got two answers, a positive answer and a negative answer, which makes sense because it's a second power. It's going to be two answers, right? Okay, so next one, I'm going to minus 9, minus 9, and that's level 4. Okay, you're like, wait a minute, what about level 1? Well, we did, what we did here is we simplified. We didn't actually have a level one. There was no group. The grouping symbol was the radical, but we didn't do it to both sides. Um, okay, so 3x squared equals negative 9. So level 3 is multiply and divide. All right, because multiply by 3, divide by 3. So x squared equals negative 3. Level 2 is exponents and radicals. So I'm going to square root both sides. Plus or minus the square root of negative 3. So now I'm going to simplify, because again, I'm only doing something to one side of the equation, right? And I get plus or minus root 3i. If you're doing like division to both sides or addition to both sides, whatever the case may be, you're doing a, a property of equality, which is solving. If I'm doing something to one side, it's just simplify. OK, so level 4, add, subtract. There isn't one. You're like, wow, well, there's a plus 3 there. I can minus 3. Well, no, that's inside the grouping symbol, which is level 1. You can't do that yet. So I'm going to multiply by 5 halves on both sides. Because, again, I have to keep in mind what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to isolate the variable, which is x in this case. OK, so x plus 3 over 2 equals 25 over 2, right? Because 5 over 5 is 1, and 2 over 2 is 1. OK, so uh, level um, 
All right, so we did add, subtract, multiply, divide. So level two is exponents and radicals. So I'm going to square root x plus 3 squared equals plus or minus the square root of 25 over 2. Okay, so there was no level 4, no adding and subtracting. There was a multiply and divide, level 3, because so we, we multiply and divide technically with the 5 halves. So <clears throat> the radical cancels the exponent. That's level 2, exponents and radicals. So we have x plus 3 equals plus or minus, uh, whoops, I almost wrote the radical symbol again, 5 over root 2. Okay, so the last step is level 1, which is to minus 3 from both sides. Okay, so I get x equals negative 3 plus or minus 5 over root 2, which is a sufficient answer, although some textbooks want you to rationalize, um, which means multiplying by root 2 on the top and bottom. So if you do rationalize, you'd get x equals negative 3 plus or minus um, 5 root 2 over 2. Because you'd be multiplying by root 2 on the top and the bottom, essentially, because you're doing this. 5 over root 2 times root 2 over root 2 equals 5 root 2 over 2. Oh, should I forget that? Yeah, I got that right. Okay, so pause the video and try the pro, uh, student problem for yourself. Okay, so you can go left to right or right to left. It doesn't really matter uh, when solving. So I'm gonna minus 14. So I get six equals two thirds x squared. So that's the add subtract step, which is level four, right? And I'm going to multiply by three halves on both sides. So that's level three, which is multiply and divide. Um, so that gives me nine, right? Three times six is 18 divided by two is nine equals x squared. And then I'll do level two, which is exponents and radicals. So square root, square root, that's plus or minus, of course. So plus or minus three equals x. Because obviously, if you put positive three or negative three into x, you'll get a, you'll get positive nine either way. So obviously, if you get two, all of these all of these we get two answers because they're quadratic. That's second power, right? Which means two answers. Okay, so I'm going to minus one in this one. So we got negative two x squared equals negative seven. Okay. Oh, there was no. Uh, so this was simplify. Because all I did was simplify the left-hand side of the equation to the square root of 9, basically. There was no level 1. There was no grouping symbol to do. All right, so level 4, add, subtract. Uh, divide by negative 2. So x squared equals 7 halves. All right, that's level 3. Multiply and divide. So divided by negative 2, which was a multiply by negative 2. And then level 2, exponents and radicals. So square root of x squared equals the plus or minus the square root of 7 halves. So x equals plus or minus uh, root, ah, come on, didn't work out there. Let me just fix that. There we go, root 7 over 2. Or if you rationalize it, which means multiplying by root 2 on the top and the bottom, you'll get root 14 over 2, if it asks for a rationalized form, which you'll have to do in like a trig, but not necessarily here. All right, last one, level four, add and subtract. Well, the only add and subtract here is the minus four, which means adding four to the side, but you can't do that because it's inside the grouping symbol. So it'll have to come in the grouping symbol step, which is last, right? So I'm gonna divide by two, which is actually level three, right? Multiply and divide, x minus four squared equals five halves. Then we'll do level two, which is exponents and radicals. So the square root of x minus four, squared equals the square root of five halves plus or minus. So x minus four equals plus or minus root five over two. Okay, so level one is the grouping symbols, which we do have. A lot of people would drop them at this point, but it's not necessary. So add four, add four, sort of a grouping symbol step. So x equals four plus or minus root five over two. Or if you rationalize it, make a better five than that. OK, 
okay, which means multiplying by root two over um, root two. Oh, we forgot the negative, I'm sorry. There's a negative there and a negative there. So that means there's an I when I take out the negative one, right? So there's an I here, we forgot that. Okay, so if I multiply by the root two over root two to rationalize this, I would get, move the word or over, looks kind of weird, or four plus or minus, so if I multiply by root two, I get root 10 over two, and then I. I actually like the right-hand one as far as the look, because it looks like root 10 over two is the uh, B value. Because again, you're multiplying by root two over two. So basically, you want to do it up here in the corner, root five over two. So times it by root two over root two, right? So you get root 10 over root four, which of course is root 10 over two, which is how I get that. Okay. So that is the isolation method because all of these just have a singular X term of the same power. So if you have a mixed bag, you need to use another method. Let's go to the next page. So if, for example, these ones have both X's and an X, so I cannot use the isolation method, it would not work. So I have to use the zero product property, okay? So if a times b equals zero, then a equals zero and b equals zero, right, equivalently. And I have the algorithm here to do uh, factoring, which is one of the two methods to use to solve a quadratic. And the zero product property doesn't always just work for quadratics, use for cubics and quartics and anything up to, you know, infinite number of powers. You just get more answers. So the quadratics have two answers, cubic have three, quartic has four, so on and so forth, as you'll see in the later chapters. Okay, so following the algorithm, let's see if I can get the, keep the algorithm in the page at the same time. There we go. Let's see how this works out. Okay, so if I rearrange this by minusing the 45, I'm going to get 1x squared minus 4x minus 45 is equal to zero. So following the algorithm, 1x, 1x equals zero over one, right? So I did this part, one X, one X, and then one, and then one times negative 45 is negative 45, right? Which gives me one times 45, but one of them has to be negative, correct? Or I can get uh, three times 15, and I'm just going in order, right? Because one goes into 45, two doesn't go into 45, three goes into 45, four does not go into 45, but five does. Okay, and I want to get it the the uh, the term um, negative four, correct? That's what I want to get. So that means the number I need is positive five, negative nine. So x plus five is equal to zero and x minus nine is equal to zero. So x is equal to negative five, and x is equal to nine. Okay, so that's using the factor algorithms, right? So essentially you wanna multiply a times c to get a number, right? That's what we did to get the negative 45, right? That's this right here, the one times negative 45, and then they must add up to get that middle number, right? The middle number there, which in this case is the negative four. Okay, one more. So zero equals two x, two x, and two. So last time it was a one, I could just drop the one, not worry about it. Now it's a two, it's, so it's a non one, so I have to worry about it a little bit. Okay, so two times 12 is 24, which is one times 24, or negative one times negative 24. Two times 12, negative two times negative 12. Uh, three times eight, or negative three times negative eight. Uh, four times six, so negative four times negative six. Five does not go into 24, but six does. But six times four, I'm back to where I started. So we've gone all the way around. So we need negative 11, which means negative three and negative eight add up correctly. So negative three and negative eight. And you can do negative three, negative eight, or negative eight, negative three. It really doesn't matter because they add up the same way. It's really up to you. So zero equals two X minus three, and then two and A have a factor of two, so I can factor that out, I get one X minus four all over two, which cancels. So if the, do if the bottom doesn't cancel, you did something wrong. 
So 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, and x minus 4 is equal to 0. So 2x is equal to 3, or x is equal to 3 halves, and x is equal to 4 when you add the 4 over. Okay, so notice in both cases we have two answers because they're quadratic. And in the, the first case, the 0 is on the right, right? And in the second case, the zero is on the left, which doesn't matter. So zero product property works um, either way. All right, pause the video, try the student problems uh, for yourself. Okay, let's try the student problems factoring. So this is one x squared plus 12 x plus 35 is equal to zero. So one x, one x, and divided by one. Since it's one, that's nice, gonna have to worry about the bottom. Okay, so one times 35 is 35. So that's one times 35, negative one times negative 35. Um, two doesn't go in to 35, three doesn't go into 45. Four doesn't go into 35, five goes in, right? Five times seven. Six doesn't go in, but seven does. We already have seven now, so we've gone all the way around. So we need to get 12, so that's going to be five and um, seven. So you can either do five and seven or seven and five, because either way they add to 12. So x plus five is equal to zero, and x plus seven is equal to zero. So if I minus five, I get x equals negative five. And if I minus seven, I get x equals negative 7. So what you're seeing so far is, um, <clears throat> in the first case, it was a positive negative factors. The second case was double negative. In this case, it's double positive, right? So those are the combinations you're going to get, essentially, either double positive, double negative, or a positive negative. You have to account for both when you do your uh, possible factors. OK, so 0 equals 4x squared plus 28x plus 49. And you can elect to put anything on the left or the right. So in the first case, I put everything on the left, so the zero is on the right. In uh, question B, I put everything on the right, but the zero on the left. Either way, it'll work. You'll get the same answer because it just cancels a negative. All right, so zero equals 4x, 4x, and a 4. OK, so 4 times 9. <clears throat> is 196, so that's 1 times 196, or negative 1 times 196, right? Because double negative still gives you positive. Okay, um, 2 goes in, right? That's what, 2 and 98? And negative 2 and uh, negative 98. Okay, uh, let's see. 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 6 is 16, right? Right, 1 plus 9 plus 6 is 16. I'm going to add out the number. 16 is 6 and 1 to 7. That's not divisible by 3. But it is divisible by 4, though, right? Because that's 4 and 49. Um, 5 doesn't go in. Since 3 doesn't go in, then 6 doesn't go in. 7 will go in, right? 7 and 28. Um, 8 doesn't go in. Does 8 not go in? Uh, no, I think 8 does go in. Because 8 goes into 19 um, twice for 16, right? No. Uh, oh, 14 goes in, right? 14 and 14, because 9 doesn't go in because it's not divisible by 3. And then negative 14. Ah, my marker's dying on me. Come on. Need a little more battery life here. It's killing me. Please work. There we go. Okay. Um, let's just double check with the calculator here. Ah, I was right. Okay. <clears throat> I doubted myself. All right, so what am I trying to get here? I'm trying to get positive 28. Okay, so if I get positive 28, that's going to be 14 and 14 positive. That'll give it to me, right? So plus 14, plus 14. 
Okay, so zero equals two, so that's two x plus seven. And then another two is two x plus seven. Ah. So the result is two times two cancels four. So I get zero equals two x plus seven times two x plus seven. <coughs> so it means two x plus seven equals zero. So if I minus seven, I get two x equals negative seven. If I divide by two, I get x equals seven halves. You're like, well, something is wrong here because this is a, a quadratic, which is second power, which means there's two answers. There is, it's just the same answer twice. It's called multiplicity, which is actually absolutely fine. Okay, that is the end of part one.